With a push to make school lunches healthier, one of the cafeteria favorites, chocolate milk, has been talked about as something that should be banned. Brian Wansink, Ph.D., researcher and best-selling author, was part of a Cornell study looking at the impact of removing chocolate milk from schools. Welcome to uh, Good Day Austin. Welcome to Central Texas. He is here to uh, do a lecture this afternoon at the um, Blanton Museum of Art. It's at 4 p.m. You're winning the Michael and Susan Dell Award for Child Nutrition. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Very pleased. Very pleased to be here. Absolutely. So this study on uh, chocolate milk, banning it from schools, just came out today. What, what were the results that you found out? Kind of surprising from what I read. Yeah, a lot of amazing results. A lot of people believe that if you take chocolate milk out of schools, it will make kids eat better because there's added milk or added sugar in chocolate milk. What we found, we went to 11 Oregon elementary schools and took the chocolate milk out and saw what happened. What happened is, first of all, about 10% of the kids stopped drinking milk altogether. Second, those who do are given white milk, 29% more of them just throw it away. And in general, about 7% of all kids just stop eating school lunches. You know, they start bringing Funyuns and Mountain Dew and oh. stuff. Oh, well, yeah, you just you just say the word Mountain Dew, and it just it, well, there's so much there's so much sugar in that, and I just I just think you know the 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 option of having milk and, and versus sugar. Obviously, as a parent and a nutritionist, yeah. you know, you turn you turn to the milk. So so pretty much the uh, the results were not what people expected. Oh, yeah, not at all. I mean, no parent wants to think that if chocolate milk's banned, their kids are going to stop drinking milk, they're going to start doing other things, they're going to stop e eating school lunches. It's interesting, sometimes school lunches get a bad rap, but we find three out of four kids who eat the school lunch, regardless of what they choose, eat better than a child who brings their lunch from home. Mm -hmm. Because uh, schools have those nutritional programs that have been thought out by dietitians and nutritionists. Why did you decide to do this study? Well, one of the things we've started is something called the Smarter Lunchroom Movement. And, and a lot of people believe that the only way you can get kids to eat healthy school lunches is to make them. Well, we find that you can force people to eat things, but they don't have to. It's not nutrition until things are eaten. We find it's a whole lot easier to uh, simply put the white milk in front of a cooler. That increases the number of kids who take it by 30%, or, or making sure at least half the cooler is white milk. That also increases how, many, how much kids take. There's a lot easier solutions than regulating what goes on in schools. Any other things that you have uh, going on? Because I know this is an interest of you. You've, you've written the book. Many of our viewers may have heard of it. Mindless Eating, Why We Eat More Than We Think. You've been called the Sherlock Holmes of food. <laughs> so, so tell us your insight into, uh, into nutrition here. So one of the things we find is that almost all decisions that kids make in school lunchrooms are pretty mindless. I mean, they're basically there to have fun with their friends. And so we find with fruit that simply Putting fruit in a bowl next to a cash register, within two feet of a cash register, increases the number of kids who take it by 105 percent. Really, and just 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 the proximity. Moving it there, you know, giving a vegetable name, calling something crunchy carrots or you know, X-ray peas, increases the percentage of kids who take that by 30 percent. So we've got this notion, this technique called the Smarter Lunchrooms Movement, SmarterLunchrooms.org. We've got a hundred-point checklist. These are low-cost, no-cost things that schools can do to nudge kids to pick up an apple and stew the cookie, all the while still eating school lunches, which are a whole lot better than even the lunches we would make at home for them. Well, I know, we try, we try really hard as parents, <laughs> but, but sometimes all you, all you turn to is the, uh, you know, the peanut butter jelly sandwich and a cheese stick, and oh, it's mean, the best you can do as a parent, it, sometimes. There's some moms and dads out there that are very good, but. Yeah, but it's crazy, I mean, the same thing with me. I mean, I think about nutrition and eating behavior all the time, but if I've got to make lunch for my three girls, I'm throwing cheese sticks in there, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find a bag of potato chips, and if there's an orange, great. And you have to peel it for them. <laughs> you put it in the little plastic That's baggie. Right. No, I, I'm right. telling you, well, my, mine are probably <laughs> younger than yours. Um, uh, Brian Wansing, thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, he will be speaking this afternoon at 4 p.m. on the University of Texas campus at the Blanton Museum of Art. It's at 4 p.m. It's a free lecture. Great information, great insight. Well, thanks for having me today. Enjoy your stay. And we'll